Hello, I'm Karim Fizazi, medical oncologist from Gustave Roussy in Villejuif, France. I'm here in San Francisco during the ASCO GU meeting 19 for this e-cancer event, uh, sitting together with uh, Dr. Eleni F. Staffiu from the MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, Texas, but also Greece a bit. And uh, we, we would just want to discuss for you uh, what is the current situation for men with uh, metastatic uh, prostate cancer, so basically castration sensitive metastatic prostate cancer. The situation has evolved tremendously in the last three or four years, and still now. So we'll try to summarize that in the coming 10 minutes. Eleni, let's start with what the situation was, say, a year ago in early uh, 18. Uh, we had data about the stack cell and, for example, we saw the updated analysis of a charted phase 3 trial. Can you summarize this for us? Right. First of all, let me reinforce and commend for those people who probably have not realized you are among the first champions of treating hormonite disease and your group back from the first Z2 trial. So kudos for that because you were doing it at a time where there were no believers. And uh, the same thing with high-risk localized disease, by the way. Uh, so I think there's no more expert than you to comment on these. But over the course of the past year, we, I think we're trying to refine the treatment. We have a little bit of an unmet need when it comes to recurrent metastatic disease because mainly what the bulk of the patients treated were de novo. However, charted did include some recurrent metastatic disease. But charted as a trial, and just to remind you because it's now almost four years, five, that we saw the data, was mainly aimed for high volume disease as defined originally. For reasons that are more logistics, it did include patients with low volume disease. So the final analysis showed a beautiful benefit for all patients. However, given the fact that there was that clause for an analysis based on volume, we got the mature data that suggests that high volume disease, there is no question, patients get a clear, beautiful benefit by the addition of docetaxel six cycles. No questions on ADT. When it comes to low volume, the water is a little muddier in the sense that there's no obvious benefit. And I have to say that we need to keep in mind that using as a surrogate volume is a little bit tricky because it doesn't always accurately represent what is the dynamic aggressiveness of the disease. We, would, we, we take it with a grain of salt. So I think that that paper by Kiriakopoulos et al. last year helped. But what came after with the big ESMO presentations of pre-specified and non-pre-specified analysis of Stampede gave us more insight when it comes to use of abiraterone and when it comes to use of let local me, treatment. Let me stay first on the oligometastic situation uh, because one limitation from charted, obviously, is that these patients were rare, as you said, so it's still highly debated as to whether the Staxel is appropriate or not for patients with oligometastic disease. Probably we'll learn more from Stampede at ASCO this year. And for now, I, I, I'm not sure we, we can say much. Now, as you said, indeed, Stampede tested the role of local radiation for men with de novo metastatic prostate cancer and what they could, they could establish was that irradiating the primary is associated with improved PFS in all cameras, regardless of the volume of the disease. And for patients with oligometastatic disease, there's also an overall survival benefit from that. So I guess in, in many countries, this is becoming now standard of care, at least in mine, and because it's, it's quite a cheap treatment, uh, depending only and safe. Um, and it's associated with uh, benefit, including of all survival for the, these men. Moving to systemic treatments, non-taxanes. We have now, since yesterday, data not only for abiraterone, and I'll maybe come back to abiraterone, but also with enzalutamide uh, with the ARCHES trial. Indeed, I've shared with you my opinion in the past that when such studies follow on top of the previous reported positive results, and they are also positive, they reinforce the strength of using that mechanism of action. Having said that, of course, enzalutamide and abiraterone have some, some differences. However, it's the same androgen signaling inhibition. So ARCHES is a trial very similar 
to what we've seen in metastatic hormone naive prostate cancer with a little extra point of allowing prior docetaxel being used. But as you were uh, telling me earlier, it was less than 20%. It was about 18%. Still something to know in the future. And we'll hear more from Peace, I believe, on those aspects, like whether combinations right. will come. Actually, regarding enzalutamide, we, we might have, uh, hear more from Enzamet, which sure. is going to be Absolutely. shown hopefully at ASCO. And that has more patients who do stack cells, so it will maybe hopefully address the question as to whether strong AR targeting helps on top of the stack cell, which is a key question. And PEACE-1 also has completed its stack role of uh, about 1,200 men. We're just n now following the, Again, the, you're the champion this, the, these patients. Mm -hmm. So um, we, we'll, we'll see. But I, mean, I just together, don't you we'll think, have, just for us, and mm -hmm. the discussion with everyone at home and office, I thought it was a little premature because co-primaries, we saw beautiful radiographic progression free survival data, but the overall survival data was not mature yet, and I understand that the drug should be available to more people. We'll hear more about that from the FDA, I guess. But I would like to have seen also the overall survival, maybe in the future. Now, I agree with you, especially in a situation where we do have overall survival demonstration with latitude. Yesterday, we, we saw the updated analysis, even with a quite strong use of salvage treatments in the control arm. About 57% of men received either uh, the stack cell, I mean, rat and zalutamide, as a salvage therapy for CRPC in the control arm of latitude. We do see the, that the overall survival benefit remains. And it remains very stable, very robust, has a ratio of 0.66, so it's a 34% reduction in the risk of death. And that comes together with uh, um, improvement in time to pain progression, time to scattered weight events, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So clinically, it's, honestly, it's more convincing. It, it's just stronger than what, what we saw yesterday with, with Arches. So for enzalutamide, I guess we, we need more data. Um, I'm, I think it will come because those drugs are very similar in efficacy, so I don't really see why one drug would work and not the other one in the space. But we, we, we still need to, to, to see the, the data and also the long-term uh, toxicity. Um, and by the way, we're waiting for the Titan data as well in apalutamide, yeah. right? There was a press release. We haven't seen the data, mm -hmm. but same population with maybe more recurrent prostate cancer. Correct. Care, and, and again, they, they said that both OS and RPFS are significantly met. improved. So we'll see more. But I guess really these men, you know, keep dying, especially when they have a high burden of disease. So I think really the key question is, is not necessarily whether we should use enzalutamide or abiraturin or the stack cell, but whether we should use both a taxane and AR targeting agents for these men. And even tomorrow, maybe perhaps more agents with new targets. What about PSMA targeting? What about radium? What about pop inhibition, et cetera, et cetera? Those are open questions. So I think you hit it right on the head, the nail, because if you look at all the supplemental data of Stampede, and I, I think yours too, you'll have to correct me on that one. It looks like the men who are on the treatment arm are the ones who get also more exposed to subsequent treatments and it could be that their performance status is better. And it's more of a question of, is it the fact that they're well monitored and the sequencing happens there quicker? And the question that I have at the end of the day, is it about exposure to different mechanisms? Or is it, it's not whether you go for Abby or docetaxel first. It's about exposing your patient to that extra layer of treatment. It could be, it could also be that Targeting stronger the cancer from the beginning right. when it's a bad cancer makes a difference. And again, we, we need more data right. on all this, but you know, it's, it's very nice situations to, to face currently. I mean, we're yeah. making progresses. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Have a good day. Thank you.